Excellent. So I know I could see all Stevia people coming in. I'm just going to get us started with a couple of opening slides and then we'll get into some good conversation. Uh, again, as always, when we run these idea swaps, my goal is to bring you some questions <laughs> and to bring, bring you some opportunity to chat, but it is really to chat with each other and around. To that end, we are going to use this as a, an idea swap, which means we're going to give some content and we're going to use breakout rooms so we can be able to really have a good time with this. Um, of course, Many of you know this, but I always like to um, let you know that probably two of your ravingest fans, <laughs> for those of you who with chapter organizations is, of course, Mariner and Bill Highway. We both love chapters. We've obviously built our businesses around how do you support chapters in the most effective way, whether it's a technology solution, as you see from the Bill Highway side, or a training and support uh, system, as you see on the Mariner side. It doesn't really matter. We're just delighted to be here and to host these conversations. And as I always like to remind you, this is about us giving back to you and creating a community. And so if there are topics that you want in 22, or if there's conversations you want to have in 22, please, please, please. Um, let us know and uh, let us build the community uh, with you as well as for you. I want to give a big heads up. If you haven't already put these dates on your calendar, many of you, number of you here have been involved um, in our benchmarking series. And we did things a little bit differently this year, right? So um, we actually started by surveying all of you in the community, right? To ask you, what are you doing? How are you faring? Um, what's on your mind about your chapter systems? Then we added two pieces to it. We went to the CEOs. Some of you gave us your CEOs. Maybe you twisted the CEO's arms to fill that out. And also six of you um, came around with your chapter volunteer leaders and allowed us to go out and get the voice of the volunteer into all of this. So anyway, we're going to do, we're going to unfold um, the results of this, but also practical ideas on how to use this data in our three-part series on chapter benchmarking. Uh, it is going to be the 25th, 26th, and 27th of January, 1 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'm not going to say you have to come to all three. We are going to try to make them in a way so that if you have to miss one for some reason, you can. Uh, but we are going to suggest that there's lots of conversation. So please do try to put all three of them on this. Um, while hey. this is, yes. Uh, do you want to put up the slide deck? I just realized it's missing or it's I can't see it. Not currently. Okay. Anybody else Sorry. have any problem? Or maybe it's just me. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Let's let's put this back up again. I think I had all my good slides and you didn't see them. All right, I'm just gonna go back real quickly. Da da. Welcome. Are we all seeing this now? Yes. Good. Thank you. All right. And then this was this wonderful slide that you missed about Bill Highway and Mariner, okay? And this was the wonderful picture from CEX. And this, this is the most important slide. It's the slide that gives you all the wonderful dates, okay? So those dates, 25th, 26th, and 27th. I was about to mention that while this is our three-part substitute for CEX, there is no charge. So um, at this point, I want to make sure that you know that this is a gift to the community in a way that we're hoping that you will all join in on this conversation, which is so important, which is how do we empower our chapters in 22. Yay, perfect, thanks. I've got everybody back in my little world. And you know, I live in my own little world as many of you know, um, and I'm usually pretty content with that world, but I'd like to be able to share with you guys. All right, let's dive in to some content. Okay, so volunteers. That's why we're all here today, right? We can't talk about what an association does unless we're talking about who makes it happen, right? One of the things I think we noticed, and there's a really interesting conversation going on in two different places in the ASAE Collaborate about volunteer burnout. I think one of the things that we really, really saw this year was uh, the, the burnout level, the frustration level, the I'm just so tired of, our, of coming from our volunteers. 
part of it was that we really went into this incredible mode of saying, okay, what are the resources can I put on my portal? What other education can I put in my schedule? What other technology can I provide? We really ramped it up. Right about mid 2020, many of us, we sat on a couple of idea swaps and we talked about how can we do these things? What resources can I give? What education can I provide? What hands-on training can I do? What technology can I, can I provide them? And we did some really, really good things, didn't we? So one of the missing ingredients, I believe, and I've just sort of paid attention as I've listened to volunteers and I've had an incredible journey over the last 18 months working with so many different chapter volunteers. The missing ingredient, I think, kind of comes down to this quote that we all know so familiar, it comes from the Bible, but there's many versions of it, which obviously is that we can feed our chapters, right? give them the resources, give them the training, give them the technology. And we should do that. But unless we teach them how to fish, unless we really help them be able to navigate on their own, paddle down those, those, um, those currents that are getting faster and then slower and then faster again, unless we really teach them how to navigate those waters, we're gonna to continue to struggle. They won't be able to connect to their resources. They're gonna have a hard time finding, um, finding the solutions on their own. So one of the things that I've had the real pleasure of doing in this last 18 months are two things. First of all, I've spent a lot of time with Lori Rubin, who is, um, uh, she's a, she's a uh, personal professional coach, um, an, an amazing person. And we've talked a lot about how do you motivate people? How do you get people off center when they really do need to innovate or, or, or find new paths to go places, right? And one of the things that I've really picked up from her is this idea of putting on the coaching mindset, of being able to support our volunteers by helping them find their strengths, by helping them really identify what's not working, and for them to really begin to, well, learn how to fish. Now, corollary with that, and, and by the way, um, Lori was our speaker at CEX 2020, and she did a really cool uh, conversation around some of the coaching techniques. She and I then did a couple of uh, webinars, and we'll do some more probably in 22 around this with more detailed. But she's a go-to person for you on this whole concept of coaching. Parallel to that, I won't name names, but I've had this opportunity of being on a coaching journey with um, with one of with with one of our one of our colleagues here in our group, and it's been an opportunity for us to try out some of these coaching techniques with chapters as we begin to say, how do we get them? to go the next step a little bit on their own? How do we support them in a different way? One of the things, and I'm not speaking out of school, but one of the things we really found out was while there, we had rich resources and training, the volunteers didn't know about it. It's not that they didn't know about it, it's that they didn't know about it when they had the pain. So we've spent some time connecting them to those things. That coaching mindset, that ability to add this to the technology, the training, the resources, I think is what's gonna help us move to the next level. So what I'm gonna suggest we do today, and let's talk a little bit about one of the, the that's got two of the skills with putting on the, mo the coaching mindset. And as we think about these, let's play with them a little bit. And then let's then take some time to actually talk about what are the coaching opportunities that we have in 22? And collectively, we can come up with some ways of really supporting our, our volunteers at the chapter level a bit differently. So this is where I want us to start. I want us to explore um, listening and I want us to explore power questions. And I want us to do this by, um, by having a little play, a little play. All right. First, let me introduce you to the three levels of listening because a coaching, coaching mindset talks about being able to listen at three different levels. Now, I'm not gonna go into depth on these three different levels. Our goal is largely to get us to level two. Professional coaches, truly experts along this line, get easily to level three. 
the thing I want you to think about is the difference between level one and level two. The difference between level one and level two is gonna be the way that we respond to our chapter leaders. Level one is, as a, is generally coming to them. And when someone says the question with like, I can't find volunteers, we immediately translate that to, okay, so what have I heard? What do I have? What can I give them? So we're listening to our own thoughts. Not a problem with that in a general way. And sometimes the first thing out of, the, out of your mouth is, have you seen the following resources? It does limit us, it limits our ability to really motivate them to take steps. Because when you're listening to your own thoughts, you're thinking about your agenda. You're really, you're, well, you could be focusing on what have I got that I can give them? What's been my experience about this? Wow, what do I need to say next? How do I help this person? So you're constantly right here. Level two listening though, is taking it up a notch and it's moving into their space. It's really focused on what they're saying. It's not allowing your internal thoughts to go crazy. It's really about thinking, wow, what did they say? I need to understand that more. Tell me more. That's a common coaching um, question that just pulls people in. But you're essentially at this level, you're exploring the speaker's thoughts and motivations. Now, Level three, as I mentioned, that's where a lot of professional, good professional, excellent professional coaches are. And it's really about directed, it's the same thing as level two, but deeper. So it's really taking in the whole picture. It's getting, a, it's getting beyond the person's face and their voice and beginning to look at what's behind them. How are they interacting? What are they doing? Um, you know, that, that really connects or disconnects. Um, them from their problem or situation. Linda, I love that. That yes, it's they expect us to have the answers. And so we come to every conversation with our internal, our internal script is I'm having this conversation. Let me think ahead of time what resources. And as they're talking, let me think about the resources. So they're saying, uh, um, I can't get people to come to my meeting. And we're saying, okay, I could get them the Zoom. I could do this. I could do a marketing. I should tell them about the calendar that they have, right? Or maybe they say, oh, I don't have a programming chair and I don't have any programming. Okay, so I can get them involved on in the national webinar, which we could then do. You're constantly trying to find their answers. And what I want us to do is to step into that level two and begin to really find out What's going on? What's the motivation? Why are they bringing that pain to you? Now, wow, this is so easy to do, right? Okay, not. But it is a way of us being able to, in more ways than one, uh, put ourselves in their shoes. And now we can really experience and we can really help them navigate their, process, their, their, their step forward. This is what I'd like to do. I'm going to ask for two volunteers. Now, before you raise your hand, let me tell you what we're going to do. Then I'm going to take the slides down and we're going to have, I'm going to have the two volunteers to work with me. So first and foremost, I'll tell you the two volunteers will not be graded. All is good. I will not grade you. <laughs> All you have to do is one of you is going to be asked to share a favorite holiday story while the other one listens. And all I want the listener to do is to write down the questions that come to mind. Okay, easy peasy, right? So let me put my full view up here. All right, so I need two brave souls, someone that has maybe just an absolute crazy holiday story or a real Hallmark holiday story, either one. And I need another person who wants to just play the listener and understand that I am very familiar with the with the with the term voluntold. So who wants to help? Oh, so many people want to help. I think I'm going to have to call on. Well, if your video is on, I get to call on you, right? Okay, so that means I need Jill Wilbeck. Is she willing? Okay, she's willing. 
which means, um, Jill, since you're willing, we're going to let you choose what you want to do. And, um, and Rachel, did I just see you unmute? <laughs> Maybe that was a happy accident. <laughs> All right. So Will, and Jill, Jill and Will, Jill and Rachel, I'm looking at Will down there. I'm getting the Will and the Jill. Okay. Rachel and Jill, which one of you would like to share and which one of you wants to um, write down questions? Um, I mean, I don't have a specific Christmas story, but it's a holiday story. I oh, yes. Share. I'm sorry. I should have said holiday. Hmm. holiday. Okay. I can do that. Any holiday. It could be 4th of July. It could be Christmas, it could be, you know, it, it, it could be your birthday. I consider that a national holiday, my birthday, but not everybody else does. <laughs> okay, right. cool. I'll wrap a birthday and Christmas all into it. Excellent. And Rachel, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. You're just going to the questions that come to mind as you hear the story, you're going to write those questions down. All right. So wait, am I supposed to ask her the questions? Or oh, I'm very good. That's a very good clarifying question. You are not allowed to ask. All you are allowed to do is write those down. All right. All right, Jill, I'm going to give you on the clock about two minutes so that you don't okay. feel like you have to go on forever. And we'll stop you mid story. It's all OK. Your game. I'm game. Everybody else, give her give them a really great emoji or a thumbs up. Perfect. Yep, I love it. That's the team, Jill. They're all for you and go. OK, so my very first date with my husband was on December 9th. And of course, around that time, it's all holiday and it's decorated beautifully and it is just beautiful. So we went on a date and we just kind of got stuck with each other every day since then. And it was just really awesome because it was like the holiday spirit and just decorations everywhere. And then many years later, in the middle of the year, on his birthday, he proposed to me on his birthday. So that was very nice. And then six years to the date of December 9th, we got married in our home with a Christmas tree. Our neighbor is a judge. Her kids play with our kids. She married us and we had Christmas music, definitely the traditional old school, Perry Como, all the good stuff playing and cookies. And it was just really awesome. And it was on a Monday. And that evening we had gone to like kind of a fancy pizza bistro on our first date. We had a pizza party there that was Christmas theme on our wedding and it was just six years later to the date holiday spirit everywhere super duper awesome wow that's cool and i and uh, you're you had two seconds left but i'm going to stop you right there that's awesome so did everybody enjoy that give her a thumbs up and a, and a great applause for doing that i mean it's, isn't that interesting how um the date just kept coming back around again rachel um now, your your second job, Jill, I, I should have told you, I should have given you your whole job description, but I didn't. I'm going to ask Rachel just to share a couple of the questions that she wrote down. And I don't want you to answer them. I want you to, um, in your own mind, think of which questions sparked your interest and which, which questions you would enjoy most answering, okay? <laughs> Or grading my questions? Or my no, questions. we're not grading Great your questions, questions. but um, it does feel like that, doesn't it? But did I mention, Rachel, that no matter what, you have an A? <laughs> you can only go to A plus because it doesn't ever go down. Okay. All right. So my questions were, um, was there any kind of a themed decoration when you were with your husband on your initial date um, on December 9th when you guys went on your very first date? Was there any themed decorations or was it just in general Christmas decorations? Um, and I believe you said that you've been together every day since. I just wanted to... Um, ask that again, because I wasn't hundred percent sure if I caught that or not. That's awesome that even from that, so starting December nine, every day since you guys were together, that's cool. Um, so you said many years later on his birthday that he proposed, I was just wondering when his birthday was, um, what day his birthday was. And maybe this is more of a question for him, or I don't know if he's told you, did he do that on purpose? Or was he just feeling especially festive because it was his birthday? Or did he have a plan when he did that? Um, so you talked about Christmas music. 
when you guys actually got married years later. Um, and I'm wondering if there was any special song that you remember on your first date that was also for your wedding or if those, it was just in general Christmas music. Um, and I know you were talking about your first date was a pizza date and then talking about having pizza at your wedding. Did I hear that it was six years later that you had your first date on December 9th and then six years later you got married? And those were my questions. Great, awesome. Those are some pretty cool questions. Can we give a round of applause? So before I ask Jill to comment, I'm gonna ask if any of you had any other questions to go ahead and put those in chat, okay? So Jill, of those questions, anyone in particular um, spark your interest? Any one of those particular, um, have, do you have any reaction to any of the questions? Um, I found all of them very interesting, except the first one. Okay. Was there a theme um, to like the decorations on our first date? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I definitely, I still love you, but that's just the one that I found a little, okay. and, but the other ones I felt um, very engaged at and that I would um, talk your ear off about. Okay. Now, is there anyone in particular um, that would have given you pause? And I don't mean pause in a negative way, just pause as in helping you, asking you to think or get any deeper. Um, no, none of them gave me pause. I would just have um, probably this word vomit that I would just talk about them all. Okay, there's some, uh, I have to say, there's some interesting questions coming up here too. Um, like what city do those events take place in and thinking of the weather, that's always good. What, was this a pandemic wedding or planned to be small? Um, and then what did the restaurant look like on your first day and how did you carry that over to your wedding? Hmm. Um, so good, some good questions. And um, I'd love to give us time. Whoever gets put in her room with her gets to ask the questions and, and report back. But I wanna pause us and talk about the questions. And the reason why I wanna talk about the questions is first and foremost, I wanna mention that the reason why I asked Jill her reaction is because I can tell you what a good question is. I can tell you what a coaching level two question is, but really a good question is to say the eye, the beholder, it's the person hearing the question. So I'm telling you that because there's not an absolute science to this. And we're gonna talk about the anatomy of a power question. But the interesting thing was that she said that she could was engaged and she could talk her ear off. What she didn't say was that it gave her a pause and asked her to think dip more deeply. That's because like most of us, including the questions that came up in the chat, we are focused on fact finding, which are great ways to start the conversation. Facts really help us. They fill in a picture. They allow us to relate to the individual. And there's nothing wrong, as I said before, with that level one listening. And there's nothing wrong with fact finding questions. You want the fact-finding questions though, eventually, <laughs> maybe sooner than later, but eventually to build to a question that's gonna have Jill pause. That's gonna have Jill go, huh? Because folks, it's that moment when your volunteer leaders are beginning to relate to uh, what's going on inside them, relate to what is the real problem. And really it's like an onion. We're peeling back the onion and we're getting to the core. We're really getting to a place where we can better help our volunteers um, get beyond just this idea of, I need a Zoom link, just this idea of, uh, I, I'm troubling that I have no volunteers, but don't know how to get those volunteers. So for example, um, the question that was a special song that you remember, that special song that was brought to the wedding, okay? So what I think is interesting about that slightly framed, that could have gotten potentially Jill to pause and think. Maybe it had been, wow, it seems like music was a large part of what was going on. How does music pull you two together? Just something like that allows her to think, oh, and, and maybe Jill would come back and say, well, you're missing the point. It wasn't music. 
that's like a mind blowing for us because now we understand what the problem isn't. We begin to get back and we understand, okay, then what was the connection? It just gives us a possibility to get deeper. So let me, let me put the slides up and give you a few more thoughts about this idea of, of power questions and how we can take that conversation, get the facts that we need to sort of build up there and then, and then be able to get deeper. Yes, Linda, love that. See, we're already beginning to get to those power questions. Yes, yes, the pause questions. Think about that because that's gonna make a huge difference. Let me share my screen again. And um, we will hang on one second because I inadvertently closed as we all do, right? Um, there we go. All right. Let me go back and This is oftentimes the way life happens, folks. So hang on one second. There we go, that should work now. After all this time, you'd think it would work faster. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So if you're trying to figure out what level of listening that you're at, this can be very useful for you to ask yourself, as I'm listening, and maybe it's a debrief afterwards. One of the things that, um, that I tend to do after I've had a conversation is to sit down and go, what did I ask? What, and I always ask, what did I miss asking? But if you ask yourself, what are, the, what are the questions that are popping up for you? If you're comparing to your own experiences, if you're looking for facts only, if you are asking questions that you wonder about, likely you are at level one. When you begin exploring the speaker's thoughts and motivations, like, well, how did that make you feel, um, that connection? Do you think it's, wow, do you, do you, do you think music was, is, is, the, is the connector here for you? All of a sudden, you're finding out, you're getting them, you're drawing them into the question. Level three is when, this is really, um, professional coaches will do this all the time. And if you've ever been with a professional coach, you will see this in action but it's articulating what's happening and co-creating the future. What that really means is it's helping someone say, okay, I see that. What might you do as your next step? I see that. What about that do you wanna be changed into the future? So if we can spend more of our time in that too, we might find out that the resources that we keep pointing people to are not the resources that they need or that the answers we keep giving don't have a connection to the person, so they're not able to respond. Now, is this gonna solve all of our problems? No, but I will say to you that it's gonna help you refine your resources to a certain degree, but it's also gonna help you maybe build the resources that'll make a difference. So what will be really useful for us at this point is for us to begin to say, so, so if it's about power questions, how do we know what a power question is? So what I really loved afterwards, um, when um, um, uh, somebody asked the question, why? Yes, when Linda asked the question, why? So a power question starts with what or how. It starts with, to a certain degree, why? We're gonna come back to the caveat about why. It is about an open-ended question. It's not about a yes or no or a simple fact. Um, so when I was uh, talking with a group of staff um, liaisons, we were doing some staff liaison training earlier this week, and we were doing um, similar to this, a holiday story. And this one person, every one of the questions was, so what time of day did you go? So, and because it was a holiday story, what time of day did you go? How many people were with you? Um, when did you plan that? Everything was a fact building one and it could be answered, even though we think of a close ended as a yes or no, it can be answered with a simple, with a simple um, answer and then it moves on. So if we think about the fact that it's gonna start with a what or a how, we must also recognize that it has to be short, very short. Try to be as, as, as simple as possible. 
try not to have a, a compound question. Those of you that do chapter surveys, you know you're always told that, right? Make sure that you're not answering a compound, you're not asking the compound, compound question. So short ones, what would help? What's missing? I find the what's missing is a very powerful one for a volunteer that's attempting to try to do something and they seem to be, to be they, they don't know which direction to go in. So let's talk about what's missing. Like what do you have and what is missing? It's open-ended as we've said. Um, a great one is what's your perspective, which obviously is gonna be better than do you agree? And how many times do we say things like, well, most volunteers prefer small jobs, do we agree? Well, we know that. And the do we agree is a yes or no. And it really is just asking for affirmation on a topic or a, or a fact. If you want to challenge your current assumptions in these, particular, in these particular questions. And so with the volunteering, one of the things that I've done with a number of, of chapter leaders is to ask them, so who do you really need on your board? And they'll say, well, we got, I'll say, yeah, but of those seats, who do you really need on the board? Uh, Follow-up question that we were working with some group because they had a person who was on a board and never showed up. And I said, well, what's the purpose of that role in terms of a board meeting? Oh, well, not really. I just need them to do X. Okay, so do they have to be on the board then? Because what was happening was they couldn't vote. They didn't have enough people around the table to vote. So challenge the assumption that if the board has always been this way, does it have to be this way? I mean, what are you really solving, right? And that's the kind of the subject we're talking about. Stimulates reflective thinking. Really get somebody to pause and think about this. So one thing that I heard a lot when I'm talking to volunteer leaders is, we can't find volunteers now. And I'll go like, okay, um, did you have volunteers before COVID? Now. Yes, that's a kind of a yes, no, but it pauses people. And they, I've seen it happen every time. They'll go, well, well, yeah, we were having some problems. Well, what kind of problems were you having? What were you seeing then? Because if, I, if we let them get in the here and now and not acknowledge that there was something bigger, something else that they need to do, it's not just to solve for today because the whole world's gonna be perfect the next time it's gonna be a problem. Where possible you wanna focus on the future. What do we need to move forward? Okay, so you don't have a full board right now. You don't have um, committees. Maybe it's that maybe it's that um, you 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 can't put together um, in person events and people are tired of Zoom. Well, what do we what do we do to move forward? We're not going to solve the fact that people have have Zoom whiplash at this point. What what can we do differently in in twenty two? Let's not harp on what didn't work in twenty one. This is the caveat. You want to use why carefully because, and I don't know how many of you are parents, but you know, when we remember, maybe you remember as a teenager when your mom or dad said to you, why did you do that? That's the problem with the why. Lots of times that why question can come off accusatory, right? So be real careful. In some cases, we can practice power questions that are like, what led you to those conclusions? Not like, why did you think that? But what led you to those conclusions? Or, or what data did you have that helped you get there? Or what conversations helped you form that opinion, right? All of those are questions that allow us to get reflective at the same time, help you understand that thinking process. So what I want us to do now is ultimately, each of us wants to build our own bank of power questions. That's how we get better at using the power questions. Now, there are lots and lots of sources for power questions. I went back to my, my friend, my professional coach friend, Laurie Rubin, to collect some of them. And I also went into some other places, Toby Johnson, who does a volunteer pro. I went to a couple of different sources and I said, let me build my bank of it. I want us to build a bank as well, but I'm gonna give us some starter questions. I'm gonna throw us into some rooms. And our goal is here is to determine, is to come up with power, power questions. Now, remember the power questions, all the things that we just said, let me go back. They're gonna generally be a, a what or a how, 
They're going to have a limited amount of why, but why can be used in the right context that we're going to be open-ended. We're going to be short and succinct. The idea is focused on the future as opposed to just digging too far into the past. And we want to make sure that not disguised, they're not statements disguised as questions. So um, have you tried getting your board together um, on video is a suggestion, right? They're going to say yes or no, so it's it's kind of close ended. But they could give you they could give you yes or no with an excuse, right? The important thing is is don't make it a suggestion. So that would better be saying, "How have you tried to get your um your board together?" And then listen for and then do the follow up. So here's a here's a starting list of power questions, and we're going to build on them. Hey, can you tell me more? Why or why not? What else? What's important about that to you? What would help you right now? What would success look like? And maybe you could say, or what will change for you? Like, like if we solve that, what will change for you? What opportunities do you see? We oftentimes guys say, what are you, challenges are you facing? The problem with challenges, it's backward facing almost, right? But what opportunities do you see? If you could do something different, what would you begin to think about doing, right? What options do you have? What's standing in your way? So the difference between what's standing in your way and what challenges do you have is the challenges dig up all of the frustrations. What's standing in your way means I'm looking forward. And that's what we're really trying to get them to do in many of this. And then... I think sometimes, and we've done this with a couple of calls that we've had with, um, with, with my partner in crime on this, we've done basically, well, what have you done? What have you done to solve this problem? Let's talk about what you've done and see how we can build on that. That both, that, that both validates that they're doing stuff, right? And that with the right support, that stuff could generate, right? So that's what we really want to do is we want to build up our volunteers through this coaching process. All right, let's build a go-to power question link. Okay, let me stop my share. Stop my share. I'm going to have um, Sarah uh, from Bill Highway, my partner in crime on all of these fun idea swaps. She's going to put us magically into some um, rooms. All I want us to do is I've given you some ideas. Just love to have you see what other power questions. Now, I see a number of people on the call who I know have some power questions because they've been using them. And yes, Anne, I'm looking at you. Did I, did, did I see Anne on here? She's still on here. Anne's got some, yeah, there she is. She's got some amazing power questions. I'm not setting you up, Anne. It's just in our conversations, I've, I've heard those. Um, Diana Tucker is another person, I know. So a bunch of you have some, so bring them to the table. If you're not sure, if it's a power question, this is what we're going to do. You're going to talk about it in the room. We're going to come back. And what I want you to do is light up the chat with the power questions that you come back with. Some are going to fit you. Some aren't going to fit you. I want you to leave this idea swap with some power questions that you can try in 20, well, I was going to say 22, but gosh, if you're talking to somebody in 21, you could use them, right? All right. Did I give you enough time, Sarah, to uh, set up the rooms and open them up? How many rooms are you wanting, Peggy? Oh, 30 I 30 people. We have 30 people. So let's do five rooms. Okay. Is that okay with you guys? Let's do it. Bam. Well, and All how right. long do we want to be in there? We are going to be in there for about, what do you guys need? Show how many hands. You need five, 10, 15, or five, five, 10, eight minutes, Sarah. I had that in my mind. I knew you were going to say. All right. I'm going to send everyone in. See you guys in eight minutes. Okay, a little bit.
cool beans. I I did not go because I want to make sure that that's okay. I was going to ask you, um, Cynthia. Yeah, if Lisa anybody Marie, has a problem, I can jump in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, Cynthia and Lisa Marie, I don't know if you can hear me, but if let me know if you need help getting into a room, I can add you. Looks like Lisa Marie is still here. Um, well, she's Lisa got, Marie, she's got kid, and she's okay. got. She might have uh, walked away. So yeah, yeah. She might. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Yeah. Cool. She's got okay. a power question or two too. So maybe when she she'll be able to join. <laughs> so um I don't know that we'll have time to do a second one. That's okay. I think the information you shared though is helpful. Mm -hmm. I'll pause the recording. I was expecting some more. I was expecting some more holiday pictures on the backs of, of folks, but um, Will, are you in the office office or is this your home office? This is my home office. Okay. <laughs> Looks yeah, like a lot I, of work getting done. I have a virtual background too, but my computer that I'm using doesn't allow it for some reason. Yeah, because it's smart, because it just eats up more bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, it just really frustrates me. <laughs> I need to hide all of this, all of this junk. <laughs> yeah. Same here. Well, if I get asked one more time when I'm going to choose my like wall color and like yes. paint my room, <laughs> but every time I put up a virtual background, it like crashes my computer. So it's, I just need to paint it, I guess, at this point. We actually, Sarah, there's a whole group of us. We're all just going to take a road trip to Michigan and paint it for you, but we are going to paint it our own way. So if you don't have it painted by the beginning of, of 22, it's field trip time. <laughs> Who's with me? Who's with I'm, me? You're welcome. Oh, Michigan, it's, it's you got lakes, you got all kinds of great the, things. We're going to have fun. It's <laughs> called Michigan in January. Yeah. They call okay. it the Michigan, right? Well, we can get good prices. <laughs> All right. We won't do it until, oh, but see, Sarah's getting married. So we got to do it. We, oh, well, she's going on a honeymoon. We'll do it in June while she's out, while she's out. All right. Welcome back, folks. It is um, great to have you all back. So what I'd love for you to do is, oh, and Emily will be there anyway, Sarah. So it's all good. What I'd like you to do now is um, throw some of your power questions into chat. What did you talk about? How did you, you know, what, what kinds of, of questions, what kinds of thoughts did you have as you were thinking about where do I take this to the next level? Um, good, keep going. Okay, okay. Now, um, Sh Shelly, on the, on the, um, <laughs> Shelly, on the, uh, what can headquarters do to help the chapter reach their goals? Is that a follow-up question to a one that's really asking about their goals? No, it's not. Okay. Yeah. So when you're asking a question like that, um, it would be, it's going to be useful for you to know what is your top goal that you want that you would love to see achieved in 22? And then the follow up, my, my, my final question, my, my, excuse me, my immediate next question would be something to like, well, how do you know? Paint that picture for me of success. And then, okay, so what have you got in hand that can help you accomplish that? Okay, great. What do you need? What else do you need? And then you come around to connecting to what headquarters can do. One of the things that we do is we, and, and I and thank you for putting that in there and allowing me to sort of articulate a bit about that. When we start off with this question of uh, what can headquarters do, you are going to get their latest laundry list, right? And the problem with that, as soon as they articulate a laundry list to you, there is an expectation you are going to act on that. And if those items will not solve something for them, and you say smartly, I won't do that. Now you've got to explain that. Or if you think it might help and you give it to and it doesn't, they're spiraling. So one of, so one of the dangers of that question, which is usually a great go-to question, 
is where it might take you down the road and where we want to go down the road is slightly different. We're at a, you know, we're at a, um, we're at a, we're at a corner right here. This way is going to take us the same place where we've been. This way is going to take us someplace else. It's a little unknown. So build in some, some, some initial questions. Oh, Maggie, I love that. We should all steal that one. What's your dream for your chapter? What do you dream for your chapter members? What is your purpose as a chapter leader? What's missing? A great set of questions for us just to, 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 uh, to, to um, hang on to. Um, yes, okay, so uh, 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 Corey, good, good way. How are you planning your chapter's future? Now, it would be interesting for you to tweak that a little bit and say, and say something to the, to the uh, effect of, um, it's, as you're saying, how are you planning for your chapter's future? You might say, so what's something you see in your chapter's future? Great, how are you planning for that? So what I'm suggesting is that sometimes we start with the question we need to end with, as opposed to starting with the question that's gonna help us understand how authentic the answer is, right? How authentic the answer is. So if we start too early, if we, if we start with, the, with that ending question too soon, we've got some missing things, which is why guys, we tend to think with this idea of anticipating what you can do because we are generally at the follow-up questions, not the starting questions when we're working with our chapters, right? So, so th these questions are good. I'm just going to ask you to think about it. Is this the starting question or is this a follow-up question? What question is going to get me to a place where I can really, I can really answer that? So, um, and Anne, I love this one. What would, what would happen if you did nothing? That is the most important question. And I don't want to call Michelle out, but Michelle and I have been talking to our chapter leaders and we've used that question because some of them are so, they're burned out, but they're burned out for all the good reasons, right? And so what would happen if you didn't do anything? What would happen if the only thing you did was this X thing and it's six months down the road? What if you gave yourself the month of December off? What would happen? Probably nothing, right? So I, yes, so I really think the degree that for us to take that question really to heart, what would happen if you did nothing is going to be important. Now, if you've got some, how many of us, let me ask this question. How many of us have say, let's see some chapters which are really struggling, some chapters which are sort of struggling, some chapters which are maintaining, and some chapters which are succeeding. Anybody have that kind of a, of a, of a, of a conundrum? Yes, right? <laughs> so I mentioned that because some of these questions would work no matter what, but some of these questions could be truly game changers. So let's say you've got a chapter, which I use the phrase, too small to succeed. What would happen if you did nothing allows you and that one or two or 10 members that are there to begin to say what's really going to make a difference and allow us maybe to release ourselves as a formal chapter and become a networking group or allow us to say, actually, if we connected with this chapter that may be too far down the road for a regular basis, but could be very supportive in a long-term relationship, that's, that's the kind of questions we're coming to. So nice. Lo these questions are great. We will send the chat, by the way. We will, we will send the chat because there is some very rich questions in all of this. So we've got just a couple minutes left. What I want to do is ask you guys, and again, in chat, um, or you can uh, jump off mute if you'd like, what do you need to coach your chapters on in this coming year? What what are the coaching challenges that you guys need? Um, one of the things we want to do as a community is see if we can support each other. So what are the challenges you see coming down the road that we have to be prepared to um, chat? And while I'm doing that, I think I see Catherine's hand is up. Catherine, if there's a question, I'd love to have you just to chat it while we're, while we're talking here. <laughs> no, I think it was an accident. So sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, you're just giving me a high five. Here, here, here. Thank you. <laughs> All 
All right. So what are we what are we looking to coach our, our leaders on in our last in the last couple of seconds here? Um, yes, how to delegate. Let amen. We have to do a whole webinar on teaching our chapters to delegate, our volunteers to delegate. And you know what? That's for all volunteers, right? Yes. Uh, onboarding. Yes. What is true onboarding? Excellent. Excellent. Um, what yes, Michelle, I love this. It's peel it all back. What's going to make a difference for you? And guys, this is going to be important for us when we're putting together our chapter health cards or our chapter dashboards or our chapter awards in 22. It's not how many things that they, they can do. It's not how many things they did in the past. It's what's going to make a difference, right? Perfect. You guys keep these things coming. I got one o'clock Eastern time. I got top of the hour on my on my thing. Let me let me throw a couple of quick little things out for you. Um, so first and foremost, one of the things that we did today in the beginning, and thank you, thank you, thank you to Jill and Rachel, my volunteers. Um, we're we have to get into the, we have to know how to tell stories, and part of this was also to talk about showing how stories can bring people in and bring people together, and can be catalysts for how you can ask questions. So I want I want you to think about in your 22 skill development. Do you know how to tell good stories? Do you know how to teach chapter leaders to tell good stories? Can you tell good stories about your chapters to your CEO and to your boards? Right. And then I want you to also to think about how can I use these questions in a way that gets to the heart of the matter and we stop trying to do the same things over and over and over again. And then the last thing I want to mention to you is January 25th, 26th, 27th, we are going to explore how do I use questions in the context of using benchmarking data? How do I tell the stories with the data? How do I help our chapter leaders be have better years ahead. Guys, it's been great being with you. Anything for the road? Awesome. Chat's going to come. Slides are going to come. Audio is going to come. And most importantly, ring in a beautiful new year as you ring out with lots of fun this wonderful 21. We'll be talking to you in 22. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.